A bipartisan bill for better border protections, did Symantec just oust the CIA? And Wi-Fi networks can hack your phone. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for April 11, 2017, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. If you have not checked out our Patreon yet, please do so. We have lots that we want to do for the show, but we can't do it without your support. My next goal is to add a monthly Q&A exclusively for all of our patrons, and we are going to upgrade our ThreatWire set. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place to support ThreatWire, and the link is in the show notes. On to our first story. In the US, a warrant is needed to search your electronic devices. But if you are crossing through the U.S. Customs and Border Protection, those rights are basically null and void because Customs and Border Control basically have the right to search and seize your device without warrant, detain you, and possibly deport you. In recent months, there have been reports of border agents asking for social network passwords, as well as unwarranted searches of a NASA-owned phone belonging to a U.S. citizen. Some senators want to change that by introducing a bill to the House and Senate that basically puts the same regulations on border control. They would need to get a warrant and probable cause to be able to search your electronic devices. This would only apply to legal U.S. residents, though, traveling back into the U.S. Senator Ron Wyden, a Democrat of Oregon, and Senator Rand Paul, a Republican of Kentucky, introduced the bill together, summarizing that it is, quote, to ensure the digital contents of electronic equipment and online accounts belonging to or in the possession of U.S. state persons entering or exiting the United States are adequately protected at the border and for other purposes. And they labeled it the Protecting Data at the Border Act. What a cute name. The bill speaks to searches being unreasonable under the Fourth Amendment and includes fingerprint or biometrics as access credentials that a citizen can deny to hand over to an agent. It also states a cutoff time of four hours for delaying entry to a U.S. citizen. This bill would not change the warrantless search for tourists, visitors, or foreign citizens visiting the United States. Even more from WikiLeaks Vault 7 this week. On Friday, they leaked 27 documents, some of those hundreds of pages long, codenamed Grasshopper, which is, according to WikiLeaks, a platform used to build customized malware payloads for Microsoft Windows operating systems. Grasshopper provides flexible customizations for malware so a CIA agent can build the software to work a certain way depending on their target. Grasshopper tools allow for persistence on a machine, which basically means it's going to run as a rootkit and it'll keep coming back, ignoring antivirus and reboots. The tool can include encryption and allows for personal security product avoidance. So it's not detected by that antivirus software. One part of the software, which is called Stolen Goods, was pilfered from Carburp, a crime rootkit that can be found in the wild and is used for bank fraud malware and includes persistence as well. This grouping of documents gives us a really technical tutorial in how the CIA spies on targeted Windows users. Like we had mentioned here on ThreatWire last week, we are likely to start seeing comparisons of the code that was released by WikiLeaks and what is actually infecting targets in the wild. And it seems that actually came true a lot faster than I thought it would. Researchers at Symantec have confirmed a group that they called Longhorn has been infecting industrial agency targets since as early as 2007 with very, very similar tools as what has been described in the Vault 7 leaks. Symantec hasn't necessarily come out and said, the Longhorn group that we've been tracking is the CIA for sure, but the re resemblance in this research between the two is definitely the there. Longhorn has targeted machines in 16 different countries, including ones in the Middle East, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Symantec's whole blog post can be found in the show notes detailing the comparisons that they've made. A Google Project Zero researcher named Gal Benyamini discovered a flaw in commonly used Wi-Fi chips that could allow over-the-air hacking of Apple and Android devices. Since many different brands of smartphones rely on Broadcom Wi-Fi SoC to make their devices connect to wireless access points, it's very common. This problem affects popular brands such as Apple's iPhone, Google's Pixel, Samsung's Galaxies, and even more. Apple fixed the problem with iOS update 10.3.1, and Google's update is only available to a few 
few devices such as the Pixel, with Android phones on cell carriers awaiting the update. The hack allows for an attacker to run malicious code on a smartphone without even touching it by just being in the wireless vicinity. Benyamini was able to execute a very, very simple proof of concept of the code that basically just allowed him to change one variable on the device's memory, but the implications could be way worse than that. This is another example of the term stack buffer overflow, which is a common means for attack. Luckily, the researchers say Broadcom was very efficient with providing patches for the problems and working with vendors. Thanks again to all the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. If you can spare a bit of change, any little bit helps us keep the show completely independent and ad-free. We now have an audio-only RSS feed, extra content, and early access for our patrons, so definitely check out all those perks. We might even feature your fur baby in an upcoming episode like the brand new Chloe. Hello, Chloe. You are adorable. I want to pet you. Can't donate? <laughs> you can also hit up the subscribe button, or you can share this episode on your favorite social media page. Use the hashtag ThreatWire so that we can see it, and we might even retweet you. So, yay! Awesome perk. With that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet.